it is my pride to be part of this BIS SDG for school year 2022-2023. It is indeed a milestone for Benedictine International School to see how our students respond to the goals of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I'm so proud that you, our dear students, have been so conscious and aware of the global goals that the people of the world need to focus on. Your paperwork that you have made will definitely bring brilliant progress and sustainability. And may I uh, have the pleasure to share with you the, uh, the titles that our students have made. Title number one, Preserving the Philippines Ecosystem One Animal at a Time. Title number two, A Documentary on Overseas Filipino Worker Life Inside and Outside the Country. Title number three, Climate Action Initiatives, the Impact of Plastic Ban Policies Implemented in Quezon City. And lastly, title number four, Backyard Gardening, an Approach to Support Food Security. Great project, great research, great title. These students deserve our congratulations. And of course, uh, we would like also to uh, recognize the support extended by their moderators, Mr. Fred Pelonia and Ms. Rica Villapaña. So in closing, uh, let us look forward to uh, seeing one another, working together, and, and facing all the challenges, and make these SDG goals be transformed into a reality come 2030. So on behalf of our school director, Ms. Joan Marie Bondo Antonio, congratulations to everyone, congratulations to our students, and congratulations to our moderators. Keep up the good work. are one of the freest animals in the world. They soar through the skies with ease, their wings carrying them wherever their hearts desire. However, Tragedy po sa isang establishmento sa Bohol ang may gitpit ng hayop kabilang ang ilang ending. Ug lima ka zebra dogs. Bisag mi tusab. May gitpit ng dalawa ang ang African dogs. However, with freedom comes danger. Before we get to the good part, I'd like to take a moment to formally introduce my group. First and foremost, we have Celine Jessica Eteralde, Suntina Barreto Santiago, Karen Ashley Arroyo, Kira Maus Chua, Cedric Guillaume Penafiel, Alia Nicole Tesoro, and myself, Jesse James Dumlao Favier. As I have mentioned the people in the group earlier, this research is conducted by students at Benedictine International School and this focuses on SDG goal number 15, Life on Land. The research aims to spread awareness about the endangerment of the Pithecophaga Jeffrey or the Philippine Eagle. Okay, so as much as I want to take this entire presentation as serious as possible, I'll just be completely honest with you guys. 
We initially chose this topic because we thought that the Philippine Eagle was cute. <laughs> and yes, you're right, it is a superficial reason. But I believe that's how most students start, out of obligation and with no choice. However, as we continue to learn more about the Eagle, we found ourselves slowly getting invested into the topic and the many things these beautiful creatures do. So, what better place to visit than the Philippine Eagle Center in Davao to learn more about the Eagle? <laughs> what was that No, for? no, no, wait! That's definitely not our best option. Alright, fine! What idea do you have without pushing me down this time? Okay, first, like you said, the Philippine Eagle Center is in Davao. And it's not like we can take a road trip there, so our only option is to go by plane. It's probably going to be a hassle for our parents, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a Catholic trip in general. Davao is a big no. <sighs> Fine, you, you have a good point, but what can we do then? Okay, what about this? Alright, so as said by Cedric earlier, Dava was not an option. This is because the initial plan had uh, a, f a few mishaps. Anyway, my group had to think of something else and we drew upon our adaptability to overcome the challenge. Enter Elia Tesoro. Hello everyone, great to be here. Oh, You look... I know, Cedric pushed me and I almost died earlier. Oh. Okay. Anyway, as I was saying, apart from Davao's Philippine Eagle Center, a sanctuary that proudly shelters not just one or two, but an impressive array of 36 Philippine Eagles, there emerged a simple yet effective solution to our predicament, Nino Aquino Parks and Wildlife Center. It was much closer to school, which meant comfortable traveling, less expenses, and a safer option considering that the group consists of rowdy teenagers who have the tendency to get lost easily. Ugh. Couldn't be me. And after many revisions of the first paper, we actually w we sent it into the teachers and got it approved. Thankfully, everything was smooth sailing from then on. We definitely showed our problems a thing or three. Yeah, and we were even able to send in our second paper very easily. Where are you guys coming from? Hey guys, it's your favorite vlogger, YouTuber, and epic gamer, Selene Tirolde. Karen Ashley Arroyo. Yo! Oh my god, that was so bad. I'm also here, guys. Don't forget about me. Hello, testing. Yo, okay, it's working. This is uh, okay. There's audio, yes. We're at uh, Nino Aquino Park and Wildlife Center, and we're gonna be interviewing a Philippine Eagle caretaker for our project. What is that the music? <laughs> And we're here with Sir RJ. <laughs> Let's just film the Philippine Eagle. Yeah. Because, why don't we just ask like... Hey guys, it's me, narrator JJ. And just for context, we sat down and relaxed for a bit because Aliyah wasn't there yet. Public apology and a really big shout out to her for volunteering to talk to the staff at NAPWC to get us an interview. Oh, and look at that, Philippine Eagle on a thousand peso bill. It's important, guys! The Philippine Eagle's important! Oh, it looks so cute! See that? Now that we finally made it to the office with air conditioning, <sighs> We also managed to get the green light to interview a very kind, amazing soul. This is Miss Maria Lourdes Albeda. Jeffery, Pitecofaga meaning it's a bird of prey, it's a raptor. Jeffery because when the Philippine Eagle was first discovered in the island of Samar in 1896, it was the, the, the Englishman who discovered it. Uh, the one who financed his trip was his uncle Jeffrey. So, in honor of his uncle, naging Jeffery siya. Okay? Uh, apart from signifying that um, a forest is healthy, like what kind of other problems can we face kapag Philippine eagles actually go extinct now? Wala na. You'll only see them in coloring books, in, in, the, in the internet, 
encyclopedia. In fact, one area we went to in Apayao, this was uh, where they discovered the first active nesting site. Yung mga tao doon, yung mga bata, no, sa public schools, they were so happy to receive yung mga posters, colored at that, because they have only seen a black and white photo of the Philippine people. What are the main challenges for that you face in caring for the Philippine eagle? Number one, we have had to tread uh, dangerous ground at times when we conduct our surveys and monitorings, especially kasi alam mo, uh, forest yan, no? So, as you know, there are some nice people there, so we have to, that's part of our job. We have to seek clearance from the left and from the right that we are there to do our job. We are not uh, in any way jeopardizing their operations as one of it. And then you're exposed to the elements. No? So because you don't live in hotels when you're up there in the forest, there's no hotel. So you live with the barest of essentials. You step out of your comfort zone. Uh, so, so for girly pop, like, uh, what's the daily routine for caring for the pop? Hi, girly. Okay, girly. Yes, okay. Sir. Girly eats once a day lang. No? Once a day lang. Yeah. She's given about 300 grams of carrot beef. Uh, basta, alam mo, alam mo, carnivorous. So, kailangan she has to eat. Yun. And then, she gets a yearly check-up. No? She gets checked for yung kanyang uh, blood. She has x-rays done. Um, the vet checks her up. The, this is done very, very early in the morning. Madilim pa. Para hindi mag, ano, I don't know how to say it in English, nagpupumiglas yung ibon. No? Mas madaling i-restrain pag uhulihin siya na medyo madilim. Do other countries apart from Singapore right now? Well, we have not received any letters of intent. no mm. But of course, lahat yan, it has to be screened properly. It will have to pass through the Philippine Eagle Working Group. And then it has to be, uh, their proposals will be evaluated. If uh, they meet the standards, who knows? We don't really know. Oh, uh, so can I ask one more Yes! Uh, considering Gurley is currently in the care of the park and is currently caged, uh, may I ask how her diet, uh, uh, her diet is managed since you said well, Philippine eagles are carnivores and we, we rely on animals for food. How does the park manage her diet? Gurley has a favorite uh, caretaker okay there's only one caretaker who can enter her cage it's a double cage you know may, may, para may safety ano siya, you know? Uh, her meal is cut up into small portions you no know? and it's fed to her sometimes kunyari, kung kailangan ni girl ng vitamins yung vitamins niya dinudurog and then they they incorporate it in the diet so she's fed like that every day and then if she gets a little obese then the diet is regulated. Is there like, yeah. does girl get any social interaction with other birds? But like, are Philippine eagles friends with other birds? Uh, Philippine eagles are very territorial. Uh, so, alam mo yan, pagka may intruder, <laughs> even with their partners, sometimes they can kill their partners pag ayaw nila. Oh, wow. Yung, um, um, yeah, ang problema natin, one of the, ano, just to cite to you an example, the birds that we have now in Singapore, Sam, Sam is the girl, and Gio is the boy. So ngayon, si Gio has been offering sprigs, no? Nagde-deliver siya. Kasi sinimulate nila yung environment, no? Kunyari, naglagay sila doon may tree sa loob na makakapag-deliver siya ng sprigs or leaves. Gio was already offering it to Sam. And Sam refused. Ayaw niya. And then sometimes, when they get together near the the partition, nagiging hostile, aggressive. Makikita mo talaga na, or sometimes when the food is delivered, bigla silang magkakapi. Ang ibon, pag nag-cup na ganyan, ibig sabihin, no touch. This is mine. Ganon sila ka-protective. So, si Gurley naman, ganon pa rin. Ginagawa pa rin niya. Yeah, so, yeah. I think that covers just about it. If you really made this far, congratulations. You're a really strong person. Anyway, this is the conclusion part of the video, and I'd just like to say that during our session with Miss Maria, she said in the middle with a tone of reverence and wisdom that Philippine eagles are very much like humans. 
It was a captivating narrative that connected us to these majestic creatures on a deeply empathetic level. Filipino eagles experience emotions that transcend the supposed boundaries of their avian existence. They, too, have the capacity to fall in love, staying loyal to their partner till death they part. They can forge deep connections with their partners and display affectionate behaviors that echo the tender bond shared by humans. We learned that these remarkable eagles also possess a daring and adorable spirit. Miss Maria recounted how, Driven by an innate curiosity and yearning for play, some juvenile Philippine eagles have been seen to courageously leap from their lofty nests. This display of vulnerability and spontaneity is to accord within us, reminding us that even these exotic creatures possess an intrinsic desire for connection, adventure, and joy. Philippine eagles embody the resilience and fortitude required to thrive in an ever-changing world. Their struggle to adapt and persevere mirrors the challenges faced by us Filipinos. River dividing North and South Manila. American tanks and tank destroyers on the north bank of the river fire at last remaining Jap stronghold. Machine guns firing at Jap emplacements in the Latram and post office building. Abundance! Consumato mest! and we were urged to recognize our responsibility as stewards of the Earth's natural wonders. We should embrace commitment towards preserving the delicate balance of the Philippine environment. Our interview with Miss Maria served as a poignant reminder that the fate of these Philippine eagles and many more extraordinary beings rests in our hands, compelling us to act, raise awareness, and to preserve the Philippines' ecosystem. One precious animal at a time. Truly. Thank you for watching. Moved out to a new city, June is dawning down on me and all that I can find. A sickly romance in the air, lovers stroll with a care inside Ooh, this can't be right Overseas Filipino workers, or OFW for short, refer to the Filipino citizens who leave the country to work abroad in order to support their family here in the Philippines which is usually because of the better pay jobs give in other countries compared to the Philippines. Though being an OFW and getting better jobs does benefit people a lot, there are also a lot of negatives that come with being an OFW. The most notable one would be the mental health of both the OFW and their family members. Being away from loved ones can be especially difficult for a lot of people, and that could affect your mental and maybe even physical well-being. We, the researchers, wanted to know how both OFWs and family members cope with being so far away from each other, as well as the effects it has on their mental well-being. The main objectives of this study were to 1. Give context and picture of the life of our modern heroes and how they deal with everyday living. 2. Provide a better portrayal on the OFWs' thoughts, feelings, successes, and problems from their perspective. 3. Focus on knowing the effects on the mental health of a migrant worker and the family as information on their life and experiences. These objectives aim to help the researchers document the life of an overseas Filipino worker and their family members. The researchers plan to interview 5 to 10 OFWs, both current and former, and their family members that fit within the age group of 14 to 50 years old. Other than the OFWs themselves, family members, like children and spouse, would also be interviewed to get a different perspective. The researchers' hypotheses were as follows. Number one, a number of Filipinos choose to work abroad instead of the, in the Philippines because work opportunities in their country for both blue-collar and white-collar jobs are not as favorable compared to other countries like Saudi Arabia, for example. OFWs in their immediate family experience a hard time when being separated from loved ones due to separation anxiety. Depression and loneliness may also occur because of the long distance and tame apart of married couples and children from a parent migrant worker. Number three, the positive effect of having an OFW family member is the financial 
stability it offers to the family's future and life in general, as well as having a good impact on our economy. On, our, on the other hand, the negative effects are the emotional, psychological, and mental health issues that the family and migrant workers suffer from, as well as the health and safety risks that the, these OFWs take every day. Many articles and studies showcase what OFWs go through when abroad, including their struggles with being in a new and completely different environment. Not just that, but also how the family of the OFW is affected because of their absence from home. In one study in 2002, it showed that children with parents who are working abroad may develop depressive symptoms compared to children who have not been separated from their parents, showing how impactful the absence of a parent can be on a child. OFWs, on top of developing emotional and mental problems, may experience physical problems from work. In an investigation by Brian Hall, Melissa R. Garabiles, and Carl Latkin, female Filipino domestic workers in China, reported physical problems like chronic pain and poor sleep. These problems may be experienced from poor work conditions, such as an abusive employer. These and many more studies show the struggles that come with being an OFW. Interviews were held with six interviewees, being OFWs and family members, in order to see their personal perspective on being an OFW. The OFWs were asked a set of questions which aimed to give the researchers more insight on the experience of an OFW. And a second set of questions were asked to the family members to know how they were affected and how they felt about a close family member working abroad. The range of how many years an OFW had worked abroad varied from 1 year to 30 years. When asked which country they worked in, all of the interviewees mentioned countries in Asia, being Singapore, Taiwan, Saudi Arabia, and Oman. When asked how they felt being so far away from their loved ones, majority of the interviewers found it difficult, with one saying that she felt so homesick to the point where she was not eating and sleeping properly, and another interviewee saying how hard it was for her, as a mother, to leave her son behind and not be able to take care of him. When asked what the positives and negatives were of being an OFW, their answers could be summarized as being able to earn more and support your family, but always being absent from home. When rating their experience, one interviewee rated the experience a 6, two rated it an 8, and another two rated it a 10. When asked how their family members initially felt about them working abroad, majority said they felt sad about them leaving, but also happy since they would be able to earn more and support the family. The family member that was interviewed was a daughter whose mother worked as an OFW for 30 years. She stated that she was against her mother working abroad, and she had trouble adjusting to her mother's absence for the first few months, and it even affected her studies. With the data collected from related literature and interviews with OFWs and their family members, the researchers concluded that a majority of OFWs faced trouble when adjusting to their new environment and being away from their loved ones. They would miss out on important life events like birthdays, Christmas parties, graduations, etc. The family members also felt negatively towards the fact that a close family member would be going away to work for them, even affecting their daily life like in school. The advice given from OFWs to other or future OFWs would be to stay strong, take care of yourself, and to keep in mind that you're doing this in order to support your loved ones and yourself. Have you ever experienced a day in your life where you do not have to use plastic? Can you imagine living in a world where everyone's use of plastic is reduced to a limited amount only? And is it possible for us to find a permanent solution to plastic waste? These are some of the questions that you may ponder when we briefly discuss the impact of eco-friendly policies on a city level and how big of a role they play on lessening our consumption of plastic. But first, why are plastic ban policies in the Philippines even implemented to begin with? Let's start with the core problem. Overproduction of plastic is one of the major contributors to climate change. And the numbers of plastic waste gradually increased over the last two decades. They cause landfills to clog or overflow while also posing a threat to ocean and marine life. Plastics remain intact for a long period of time that it takes over 20 to 500 years for them to dissolve. 
In the Philippines, 0.75 million metric tons of mishandled plastic is being discarded into the ocean every year. And as of 2021, the Philippines is the third largest contributor to oceanic plastic pollution. In Metro Manila, local leaders have implemented various plastic bans with varying levels of success. Plastic being such a huge part of our everyday living, how can local governments get their citizens to comply with these policies? After the re-implementation of the plastic bag ban in March 2021, some citizens are seen adapting to the policies by finding sustainable alternatives for plastic bags. Increasing the price of single-use plastic products, such as implementing a 2 peso fee for plastic bags in groceries, it encourages the public to bring their own recyclable bags when shopping. This is a policy that most businesses or corporations in the private sector, such as malls and groceries, incentivize to help engage people in sustainable practices while also gaining profit from it. In 2021, SMLs in certain areas of QC organized plastic waste collection programs where everyone is free to participate in reducing their plastic waste. Many corporations have changed their approach to handling waste due to plastic ban policies. Paper bags are commonly used as a sustainable alternative for single-use plastic bags. Food establishments in certain areas of the city strictly follow the policy by removing single-use plastic straws, utensils, cups, and bags in their stores. These are the null and affirmative hypotheses for this study. The goal for this study is to provide further information about the advantages and limitations of plastic ban policies in public establishments at a city level, Explore the prolonged effects of plastic overconsumption to help us discover the best possible solutions to reduce plastic use. And identify different ways on how people could advocate for plastic reduction and climate action on a city level. This study will highlight SDG goal number 13, which is climate action. This will be used to explore studies that focus on the long-term consequences of plastic overconsumption. As for the method used for collecting data, the researcher will be relying on Braganza's article. This study tailored Braganza's method according to the research questions provided in the paper. There are four themes discussed for this study's RRL. The first being focused towards addressing the issue of global plastic pollution through national public policies. In another study participated in by the youth, most believed that consumer behavior should change and that plastic pollution can be best addressed if policies are focused on changing the buying patterns of consumers. Gaia published the results of a 2020 study citing the Philippines as the third biggest source of plastic waste, with 55% of all plastic residuals being branded, meaning most plastic wastes in the Philippines are manufactured by companies. In another study, Aruta analyzed several following factors that correlate with people's intention to reduce their plastic use. Among these, attitudes, perceived behavioral control, and prescriptive norms were found to be significant predictors of one's intention to reduce one's plastic use. Two decades since the Solid Waste Management Act was passed, nearly two-thirds of solid waste in the Philippines is still not properly collected. This was partly due to the weak motivation among LGUs to comply with these rules, even as 13 cities and NCR have actually implemented policies to reduce single plastic consumption. Being the leading generator of plastic waste in Metro Manila, Quezon City imposed its Plastic Bag Reduction Ordinance in 2012. In 2017, an article by Braganza evaluated the ordinance, which was later integrated with the Green Fund Scheme, where the total amount collected from this 2 peso levy is used to fund environmental projects throughout the city. Qualitative and quantitative methods were used to conduct the research. Gathering and computing data was done through observation and statistical analysis. This study was conducted in seven different locations. For the figures, refer to the following pie graphs. Some of the key observations per location are as follows. Observations for grocery number one took two hours in eight counters. In most single baggings, two paper bags are used to better hold and protect the items inside. Smaller paper bags are used to pack smaller items such as butter and frozen items along with other groceries. Another important observation, this grocery continues to use cellophane cling wrap for perishable food. This was no longer recorded along with the observational data as the items were already pre-packed inside of the grocery. For grocery number two, six counters were observed for a little more than an hour. Grocery number three, six counters were observed for 30 minutes. Two customers used big plastic lavo bags for bulk buying large bags of chips. 
The buyers appear to be Sari Sari store or neighborhood sundry store owners common to this store. For the first three groceries, the most preferred packaging are new paper bags, boxes, and old echo bags. As for grocery number four, outside of QC, six counters were observed for almost an hour. Most customers' grocery shopping in bulk are mostly in groups. Those who buy less than 10 items are individuals, and paper bags or hand carry are their chosen packaging for their groceries. For grocery number five, six counters were observed in approximately 37 minutes. Most of the customers preferred to hand carry their items. One customer brought her own thermal bag. Notably, plastic is an available option for packing groceries in this store. For a grocery with exclusive membership, none of the customers brought a recycled echo bag with them, which is why I had not included this data in the pie graph. And lastly, grocery number 6, three counters were searched for less than 25 minutes. None of the customers brought any recycled plastic, and no items were hand-carried. Therefore, recycled plastic and hand carry were not included in the graph. Most customers were store owners. They were tricycle and jeepney drivers who buy in bulk, and many lived near the store and would only walk a short distance from home to buy a few items. This store does not sell any meat or perishable products. To dig further into the plastic situation in the marketplace, I did a one-on-one -on -one interview with one of the stall owners in the market, Sante Peñero, a former OFW. He started selling on March 2, 2019, a year before the pandemic started. To learn more of his views and opinions about the plastic ban policy in Quezon City, let's hear Kuya Santis' answers. Sa amin po sa tagal na, tagal ko nang binili yung kukaw ko na umabot niya pa ng tatlong buwan, apat na buwan, hanggang hindi ko na umuwi. Kasi oo, kasi ng mga tao ngayon, pag namamaling po, may dalawang silang ano, kasi yun na ang purpose ng paligid bayan is, supposed to be is, bago ka mga pumunta ng paligid, yung salitin ka yung ano, iba. Oo, mayroon ka yung nasi na unang pinagamit na gano'n ito na itong lifetime. Kaya kami bumili din kami dito kasi ito is matagal po maano. Ang bilik ko po nito is the big key. So matagal po lifetime, depende po sa paggamit ko kung paano malagalit yung sambag nito. Kaya bago ibang namulit po sa palingke, may dalang silang ganito. Para iwas dun sa mga plastic na kasi sa ibang palingke, bawal maggamit ng plastic. Binabawal na talaga. Sinusundan din nila, pero hindi talaga may iwasan kasi may ibang talaga po sa mga biglaan na galing sa mga trabaho o galing sa mga uh, namamasyal tapos lumaan sa palingki. Hindi may iwasan na may hindi sila na wala sila magbago. Dalang, um, walang dalang po. To conclude this video, the Quezon City Plastic Band Policy has proven to be effective in most areas of Quezon City. The implementation of the plastic ban made by Mayor Joy Belmonte has been successful in incentivizing environment-friendly practices among the masses, and it remains as one of the most eco-friendly cities to live in the Philippines for this reason. However, we still have yet to find a permanent solution to plastic overconsumption. There should be a better alternative for plastic sachets used in almost every item in retail stores. Products in plastic sachets are the cheapest items sold in the market naturally, so it is easily accessible for the masses to buy. The consumers are not the one that should be blamed for plastic overconsumption because multinational companies are the main contributors in plastic waste due to their production of single-use plastic packaging, especially plastic sachets. These take up majority of the plastic waste in landfills and oceans in the Philippines, which is why corporations should be held responsible for this and therefore should enact on creating a more sustainable replacement for SUPs. In the words of Coyasante, climate action should start not only from individuals, but by the companies who manufacture single-use plastics and replace the packaging of their products with a more sustainable alternative. We still have a long way to go in terms of replacing plastic with a better and more sustainable alternative. But with enough awareness, knowledge, collective effort, and discipline, it is possible for us to create a better future and leave a better world for the next generations to live in. Security starts in a garden. Hello, I'm Prince Gumapak, and here with me are Caleb, Andrew, Kito, Peter, Elise, Alejandro, and Julia. The COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted the food supply chain. As a result, 
To strengthening local food production at the household, household and community level is critical. Looking back, when the SDG initiatives were first introduced to us, my fellow researchers and I were most interested in zero hunger because of its ability to help eliminate hunger as a world issue. It all started during the first quarter of the school year when the teacher showed us a video of hunger in other countries. It made us realize how fortunate we are to have food on the table whenever we want it. And so, we want to challenge ourselves in solving food security by cultivating different vegetables and spices and hoping to harvest at the end of the SDG plan task. We are here to present our SDG initiative entitled Backyard Gardening as an approach to support food security. Our focus is on creating a world without hunger through promoting backyard gardening. Our research focuses on SDG goal number two, zero hunger. Extreme hunger remains a huge barrier to development in many countries, including the Philippines. Because of this, we surfaced and tested our assumptions about the possible ways to eradicate hunger and one is backyard gardening. Our main objectives are to gain knowledge and experience on how to do gardening, to cultivate different kinds of plants in order to compare which plants are the best for gardening to achieve food production, and to make gardening a joyful experience. From the RRL that we have gathered, we concluded three points. Uh, one, hunger, food, security, and nutrition has been a persistent issue in the Philippines. To be specific, the percentage of the families in Metro Manila who experienced hunger from 2019 to 2022 rose. Backyard home garden provides easy day today access to fresh vegetables and fruits leading to enriched and balanced diets by supplementing proteins vitamins and minerals Gar backyard gardening home garden is a farming system which benefits physical, social, and emotional aspect of a person. Our chosen methodology is correlative research. We wanted to identify the relatedness of the two main variables of our SDG initiatives, which are backyard gardening and food security, and know how one creates changes to the other. In order to achieve this, we assigned plans to each member and created weekly checklists and narrative to keep track on how we take care of our plants. Moreover, we also evaluated our own performance by answering the following questions. What worked and what could have worked better? Uh, we compared our planting activity through three different tables. Table 1 contains the list of plants cultivated by the researchers, including the type of soil used, use of fertilizer, and planting dates. The following are the list of plants assigned to the members. Peter, celery and radish, kita, basil, prince, potato and yam, julia, chives and carrots, andrew, carrots, caleb, petra and mustasa, elise, black, black pepper, alejandro, mongo. Table 2.1 and 2.2 contains a tally of our weekly checklist about how we took care of our plants. And Figure 3 depicted the growth of our plants every week from seed to harvest or withered. We may conclude that 6 out of 6 members with data were successful in nurturing the plants assigned to them. In fact, our plants are still growing strong to this day. Gardening is an activity that involves some work and effort to yield positive results. We 
the researchers came to the conclusion that anyone who wishes to grow vegetables and spices must be patient and committed to caring for them on a daily basis. The technical side is important, but to generally enjoy gardening, the right mental models must be in place to fulfill the goal of harvesting and increasing food supply. We hope that the findings of our study will inspire people in our community to do gardening in their backyards and provide them with the information they need to achieve positive results. Thank you and see you for part 2 of our research next school year. Dear Ben, As you start a new journey, you will break away with what you come to understand about the world. There is so much out there waiting for you. Worlds to be explored. People to meet. Dreams to be fulfilled. It will be uncomfortable, and the uncertainty might even make you feel afraid. But it's okay. There will be people who will see the best in you even at first glance. And especially at times when you yourself doubt it. Choose to commit to your own growth. Be a student of life and discover a world of possibilities. There will be tests for sure, but let the people around you mirror your greatness. At the inmost cave of your own fears, You'll battle it out with your dragons, and a part of you will come to pass. But at that fleeting moment, something beautiful will emerge. Receive the gifts of your own labor, and with a grateful heart, celebrate your success. Honor what you have become, and give back. For your transformation is no longer just for your dreams, for the world. Embrace what you are becoming. Be the grandest version of yourself. So go ahead. Continue living your story. With love, Ben.